Welcome to the second ever micro jam. I'm here to walk you through the demo project that I'm providing that shows you how to do some screen space painting and effect house using some render textures and camera ordering. The project that I put together makes it much simpler than it would be if you were doing it from scratch. So I'll just walk you through the project and show you what's possible. I put together a few different types of demos. One is using the screen cursor or the touch when a user is touching the screen in the app. Um, the first demo I'll show you is that one. So currently I have the smiley face that you can see, which is a hard object that renders as you move around the screen. The second thing that I have is a spray paint texture. Now, if we take a look in here, we can see that these are objects on a canvas. I'm moving around this touch paintbrush object right here, and underneath that object, it's carrying brush one and brush two. Here in the project is where you could add as many brushes as you want, and you could turn them off and on as you like. Keep in mind that brush one and two are directly hooked up to the subgraph that I put here, touch paint. And if you click the checkboxes here, this will control whether they're on or off. So if you can, if you try to turn them on or off in the hierarchy, you, your um, changes will be overwritten down here in the subgraph. So if we just want to see one brush, let's take a look at the spray paint brush. Notice that the longer I stay on a position, the more it kind of bleeds in and mixes together. If I move quickly, you can see the rainbow stretched out. That's because every frame that it renders, it's going to change colors. That's part of the touch paint subgraph, and I'll show you where to alter that as well. Um, down here, we also have spacing and strength. Spacing is zero, so that means even if I don't move at all, the paintbrush will continue to keep painting and changing colors. If we change spacing to something like 100 pixels, then we can see that it'll only change colors after the cursor moves 100 pixels. It'll behave a little bit differently with the smiley face, so we can turn off the spray paint brush and turn on the smiley face and keep that 100 spacing. And we can see that it actually, since it's a full, non-transparent texture, it doesn't sort of bleed through the same way. It actually will only drop a new smiley every 100 pixels. Um, this is a great way to just sprinkle the screen with some different sprites or icons that you want. And like the spray paint, I'm changing the color of the smiley inside of the touch paint uh, graph. Now you might notice that there's a finger paint graph here as well. I'm not going to really go through that because it's the same thing as the touch paint, but I just wanted to provide an example of how you could use the finger to do the same thing as the cursor. So everything that I cover here for the touch paint is going to be the same for the finger paint, just using the coordinates of the finger instead of the cursor. Feel free to keep that one turned off because it gets a little crazy if you have them both on. So let's stick with the smiley face and take a look at this subgraph. What we got going on here is here's where we turn on and off the different brushes based on the input to the subgraph. This just makes things a little easier to control while you're developing. Um, here we have the place where we set the strength. When the finger touch starts and ends, we turn the opacity off or on so that it doesn't bleed into the screen when you're not touching. Uh, here's where we enable the paint to be on or off by using an if statement. And then the rest is just all paintbrush stuff. So, we will take this first subgraph. All this subgraph does is take the touch position and converts it to pixel space. That's why I called it touch space to pixel space. If we want to take a look inside, we can see that it's just offsetting the origin and multiplying it by the height and width of the default canvas. This is going to be your reference resolution on the canvas. Don't worry if you don't understand some of this or don't follow along. That's why I made this entire project so that you don't have to exactly know this. You can do some really cool stuff without fully understanding how each piece works. Uh, now in order for more advanced people to follow along and alter this project in more complex ways, I'll keep explaining how these pieces work. 
move brush just takes in the spacing and it checks where the position was when you last moved the brush. Uh, if the position, if the distance between the last position that you moved it and the current position is greater than the spacing value, then we say it's moved enough that it deserves a new position. So we set that new position and then we move the paintbrush and then we can output a value here or an, a signal to say that, hey, we moved it. And now we track based on the new last position. If we go back out, we can see that this on brush stroke that we just created will do something. So this is just another demo to show you what we can do with that. Um, for this, I'm just cycling through a counter of eight different numbers. And then I'm using that index value out of this counter to choose a different color every time it changes. So every time you move the amount of this spacing, it'll change the color of the next brush stroke. Uh, notice here I am changing the brush one and the brush two. Uh, if you wanted to see something a little different, here's just one example of a tiny change that I made. And if we go back out to the main graph um, and just have both brushes, now only one of them is changing colors and the other one's staying white. Oh, and we want to turn on enable touch paint. Um, <laughs> I don't know why the camera is freezing, but as you can see, this looks pretty different. Now keep in mind that the only thing you need to do to change the brush is to change the texture. Uh, you can see this spray texture is just a texture that I created in Photoshop, just in the same way that this smiley also is just a texture that I created in Photoshop. You can change these as much as you want, and in fact, you can even change the size of them right here if you want to change the brush size. Consider changing the size of your brushes uh, procedurally in visual scripting as part of your effect. Um, yeah, so that's a, that's a quick walkthrough of the how it works. I think the most creative that you can get with this is thinking of a way to combine this with something else. Uh, I've seen some users create some effects where you can just paint on the screen with your finger. Um, that's kind of the most bare, raw version of this, just screen painting. But I think you could also do some other things where you're painting some different things on the screen, or maybe instead of taking the, the texture that this is creating and putting it directly on the screen, maybe you could apply it to the face, like my Kiss Painter filter that I released back in December. <laughs> um, for that one, I used the same technique, and I made it so that when you draw on the screen, every like two it had like a 250 spacing so every time you swipe across the screen it plants a bunch of kisses all over your face uh that one was pretty funny uh, i think it worked really well so that's just one example of an application of this exact exact type of thing feel free to mess around and come up with something unique and totally share it in the discord if you make anything and I can't wait to see what everybody creates.